A Sunday school teacher challenged her children to take some time on Sunday afternoon to write a letter to God. They were to bring back their letter the following Sunday. One little boy wrote, Dear God, we had a good time at church today. Wish you could have been there. <laughs> Sophie went to see a psychiatrist about her husband. He wouldn't go with her. Doctor, my husband has this problem. Almost every night now he dreams he's a refrigerator. <laughs> my dear, replied the psychiatrist, that, that's not really a problem. Many people dream that they are somebody or something unusual. Sophie leaned forward as she softly whispered, but you see, doctor, it is a problem for me. Jake sleeps with his mouth open and the light keeps me awake all night. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name. What's in a name? What, what do people think of when, when, when they hear your name or my name? You know, it's kind of a sobering thought, isn't it? What's in a name? When you think... Or, or hear about hear the name Abraham Lincoln. What comes to your mind? I know I don't know what they teach in school nowadays, but when I grew up, and they taught us about Abraham Lincoln, we 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 were taught to have great respect for the character that the man had. When I was in high school, and and uh, even for quite a few years after that, one of my friends. Uh, he, he, he ran Rhodes Music in the Eastgate area. His name was Hazen Rhodes. And man, I bought guitars, I bought amplifiers, he sold pianos, he sold all kinds of stuff. I, I just, I, I just liked to go in there and buy stuff and he liked me to go in there and buy stuff. And I had credit, like I could buy anything. You know, he just knew I was good for it. And, um, uh, you know, his wife, she was such a sweetheart, and, and I got to know his son a little bit, but she died quite young. And she got sick and went to the doctor, and they, they, they just could not figure out what was wrong with her. And she died. And it was so hard on him, because he, was, he lived for his wife. He loved to care for his wife. It was so hard on him. And I used to stop by the store just because, you know, I, I would always buy something like a few picks or, you know, something. But I, I wasn't buying lots of guitars and stuff like I did when I was younger. But I just used to love to visit with him. And, and, you know, he loved to talk about Abraham Lincoln. I mean, he had books on Abraham Lincoln. And, and oftentimes the, the, the subject would change and we'd start talking about I think it was his favorite subject, Abraham Lincoln. What's in a name? When you hear the name Mother Teresa, what comes to your mind? I can tell you personally, she absolutely amazed me. Because of the way that she lived, I, I saw a documentary, uh, it, was, you know, it was a number of years ago, but talk about a person that laid down their life to serve others. And you know, because of that, there were so many doors of influence that were open to her. In, in, in fact, sometimes she would be speaking to a group of people that did not share her values, that did not share her belief in God, and yet because of the way that woman lived, they respected what she said. What, what do people think of when they hear your name? What, what, what comes to mind? I'm not asking that question to make you feel self-conscious. And I'm not trying to, com trying to compare you with Mother Teresa or Abraham Lincoln. You know, uh, Dale isn't here today so I can pick on him. When I, when I hear the name Dale Carlisle, I think of radical generosity. I think of a person who is passionate about the person 
of the Holy Spirit. That's just what comes to my mind. Dave Larson was up here earlier. When, when I hear Dave Larson's name, I, I can't help but think of faithful, faithful servant. I can't help but think of somebody that, that just loves people. That, that just has a heart for people. That has a pastor's heart. One who genuinely cares. You know, and, and we could go through people that, that we know. People that are part of this family. And, and, and we, because certain things would stir up in us just at the mention of their name. What's, what's the status of your name? I'm not talking about your actual name. You know, mine is David. And it must be a popular name because we have a plethora <laughs> of Davids in this church. I'm talking about what your name implies. When people hear it, what, what do they think? What, what, what thoughts come to their mind? See, a good name really speaks of integrity. It speaks of a reputation of integrity. Proverbs 22.1, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name is actually more valuable than money. It's more valuable than all the money in the world. A good name has to do with integrity and honor. Now, you know, there's lots of opinions on this, but, you know, if I could ask this question, what do you think is the single most important trait or quality of a person who desires to make an impact in our world today? You know, if you are a person that isn't just kind of meandering through life aimlessly, trying to survive, and you actually realize that you were created for a purpose, and you want to make the most of it, you want your life to count, what would be the single most important quality? You know, some would say smarts, or intellect. After all, knowledge is power in many ways. Others might say charisma, in intensity or passion. Still others might suggest a person just needs to have good old common sense, which sometimes can appear to be lacking. And you know, all of those things are good. All of those things have value. But, but I want to pull out this thought from the scriptures about a quality that God values and that I actually believe comes from him. I'm trying to find, uh, I just want to read you just a little story. Ruben Gonzalez was a leading racquetball player. How many here have ever played racquetball? Yeah. We should have a support group. Uh, in, in his first ever professional tournament, Gonzalez reached the final. He held match point in the fifth and final game when he made a, a terrific kill shot into the front corner to win the tournament. The ball was called good and all were ready to congratulate the new champion. When, Gon when Gonzalez turned around and declared that his shot had hit the floor before it reached the wall. He lost his serve and his opponent went on to win the match in the tournament. The next issue of National Racquetball Magazine featured Gonzalez on its cover. Everyone wanted to know why Gonzalez did it. Why would a professional sportsman disqualify himself after he had just been declared a winner of match point? Gonzalez's reply was simple. It's the only thing I could do to maintain my integrity. It's the only thing I could do to maintain my integrity. Proverbs 10.9 says, He who walks with integrity walks securely. But he who perverts his ways will become known. It, it will be exposed. One of the most important qualities that we can possess is integrity. Integrity is sound, moral character, honesty, wholeness. You know, we've all known people along life's journey that maybe they had an incredible intellect, but they lacked integrity. And, and now they're, they're no longer in the race. I know you know some. 
Others that possessed amazing intensity or passion, but, but, but little integrity. And, and they've gone the same way, sidelined on the banks of the river of life. The same is true with people of insight, common sense. You know, if we lack integrity, that will become known. Our ways will become known. Our lives will be exposed. So how do I increase in integrity? How do I grow that? If integrity is so important, how do I get it? What is the source of integrity? How do I grow in that virtue? I hope that's what you were thinking. I hope I just put your thoughts into words. In integrity is obviously a valuable commodity in the kingdom. And it's more than just honesty. It is, it is a state or quality of being complete in proper alignment. It, it is freedom from corrupting influences or motives. The, the thesaurus equates it with such words as honesty, completeness, incorruptibility. In your notes, he who walks with integrity walks securely. Who doesn't like security? Who doesn't want to feel secure? Nobody I know. And yet it's not found in riches. It's not found in fame. It's not found in anything really that the world has to offer. It's found in integrity. Living an integrous life. Now th these are the thoughts I want to explore as far as I can. And I promise I'm not going to keep you till 1230. That's what you're afraid of, isn't it, Darren? 130. One so, wow. Well, let's just relax here. Do you mind just ordering a couple pizzas? Just get, get, get that coming. And Each of us lives in three distinct spheres of life and influence. And let me list those three spheres before we talk about them. There is your private life. There is your personal life. And there is your public life. And each one of us has all three. The first one, your private life. This is the part of you that no one else knows. It's a place where no one else goes. Not, not even those who are closest to us. Even your spouse does not know all of your private thoughts. Is that true? It's not a trick question. No one invades your private life except you and maybe others that you allow. Now, now God is there all the time. God knows your thoughts before you even think them. But your private life is private. But you also have a personal life. And this is the part of your life, life that you share with a small circle of immediate family and, and perhaps a few close friends. Those who really know you intimately. These are the people that you share the deep things with. These are the people that when something happens, you call them up to talk about it. These are the people that know, really know how you're doing. Now in your notes, integrity is rooted in your private life. That's where it comes from. That, that secret place, that, that, that private place, that the hidden place in God Integrity is, a, is developed alone with God. Jesus said, but, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret or in the secret place will reward you openly. The secret place is where integrity is developed. It's rooted in that place this is another reason why intimacy with God is so important. Do you think, do you think that who you hang around with affects you? Have you seen that work for good? Have you seen it work for bad? It's true, isn't it? The Bible says that. It, it, in Proverbs, it basically says, you're going to do, I, I'm paraphrasing, you're going to do foolish things if you hang out with fools. Must be the message or something, I don't know. <laughs> Cor 
corrupt company corrupts how you live. So would it stand to reason that if I started like hanging out with God, it's gonna affect me. It's gonna affect how I live. Even the choices that I make, the, the, what I allow myself to think about, what I allow to come out of my mouth, the actions that I take. You know, I, I, I go into juvie and, uh, and Daria comes and, and Andrew and different ones. We go into juvie. <clears throat> One of the hardest things when we're working with these kids is to get across the idea that, okay, you've been in here six times so far, they've actually just kind of slapped your hand. Now, I don't know if you realize that, but, but when you turn 18, it's not going to be like this. And, and it's hard for them to understand that because, you know, they, they just, they're, they're in this cycle. And, and one of the things that, that is hard to make a person understand the importance of is this. If you hang around with the same people that got you in here, you're probably gonna be back. Now, it's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to, to dish your friends because most people's friends are, are like family. In fact, many people's friends are closer to them than their blood family. It, it's hard to to, to get that idea across that, you know, it's not that you have to desert your friends forever. You just need to come out and get strong. And you need to get strong enough so that you can go rescue them at some time. But trying to do that now is not going to help you. It's going to hurt you. What are you nodding for, Amber? <laughs> it is true, isn't it? And yet it's hard to see that. You know, I, I remember a kid, he was in juvie, and he, uh, he went to rehab, you know, like nine months. I mean, he came back like, I am not using anymore. Like, like I'm going to be clean and sober. This is it. And, and I remember, his name was Wyatt. I said, Wyatt, I said, do you realize that to follow through on that, you might need to stop hanging around with certain people. In fact, if you could do this, if you could find people that are like you want to be and befriend them, that will actually really help you. And he said, yeah, that's probably true, but you know, I, I got my homies. I, I got my guys, you know. And, and you know, his story was, you know, because I saw him a couple years later, he said, I, I did really good. You know, like I wasn't using, I wasn't doing stuff. I'm hanging out with my friends. And then he said, I just had a, I I had a day when I was bummed. And I said, you know, maybe just this one time. That's what happens. That's, this isn't even part of my message. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Should it surprise us if we hang out with God that his integrity, that his virtue, that, that his holiness will actually begin to affect us and affect the way that we think, affect the way that we act, affect the way that we behave? I have to quit. Can we just stand? Can we have the worship team? Can we sing that song, 10,000 Reasons, Bless, bless the Lord, O oh My Soul? I, I will finish this message another time. But, but here's the thing. Here's why the private life is so important. Have you ever heard this terminology? Well, this building has good structural integrity. Ever heard terminology like that? What that means is the part of that building that you can't see, the foundation, the part of that building that's hidden, the structure of that building is strong and healthy. It's the private, it's the hidden, it's the private part 
that actually makes that building strong. It, it's, it's, it's what you do when no one else is looking that begins to be reflected in every part of your life. And that's a terrible place to leave a message. So put your hands on your heart and say, Father, purify my heart. Draw me into greater intimacy with you. I want to know you. I want to express you. I want your integrity flowing through my life, God. In Jesus' name. to pray with people. The benediction I want to give you is out of number 6, 24 through 26. It says, The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you, saints. <laughs>